are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normals, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. Hello, I'm Mike, this is Ben. And today we're doing our favourite thing ever, pasta, but layers of pasta with stuff in between. In front of us are three different lasagnas. They have different cooking methods. They have different pros. But which one is best? Well, we will compare them at the end, but first we're gonna teach you how to make each and every one. And Jay, you're going first. What are you cooking us? I'm cooking you a quick lasagna. And how am I gonna make a quick lasagna, I hear you ask? By cheating every single step of the way. Here's what I'm gonna use. Sausages, olive oil, fennel seeds, garlic, and chili flakes. For my sauce, all I'm gonna use is tomato puree, a stock cube, and some water. I'm gonna make a herby ricotta with parmesan, ricotta, basil, parsley, and some fresh lasagna sheets. And all three of us are gonna be using this magnificent beast. Cheat number one, rather than using a traditional beef mince for my meat, I'm going to use sausages. They already have a load of flavor packed into them and then we're gonna add some more flavor too. So, I'm gonna heat some oil in a pan and then squeeze in my sausage meat, add some fennel seeds and let that cook off for about five minutes. That'll give me time to mince two cloves of garlic and then I can add that and some chili flakes into my sausage mix too. Cheat number two, my sauce. Now we could spend hours sweating down onions and garlic and tomato, we don't want any of that. Tomato puree, chicken stock cube, water, into our pan with our sausages and let it all simmer down by about half and you'll have a really rich sauce. You'll notice I'm not gonna season any of this. Stock cubes are already really salty and the sausages have already got perfect seasoning through them anyway. Job done. Cheat number three. Now we could go to all of the effort of making a beautiful bechamel sauce, but Who's got time for that? We're gonna make a Herbie ricotta instead. So, into our food processor with a knife blade, we're gonna add ricotta, parmesan, basil, and some parsley, and blitz it all up until there's no lumps of parmesan left, and the herbs have made the ricotta a lovely sort of green color. Cheat number four, and believe me, you're gonna like this one, we're not gonna put our lasagna in the oven which breaks all the rules of lasagna. We're basically going to take some fresh lasagna sheets, put them in boiling salted water for two to three minutes to cook through, drain them, and then serve them on the plate along with our sausage sauce and our herby ricotta. Ah! ah. An open lasagna, I always think it looks quite fancy. The question is, does it need the meat? How about we try a vegan lasagna? Well, I'm, I pushed the boundaries a bit. <laughs> Might be a little bit too far. Trust me. Yeah, that's right, I'm making a vegan lasagna. I'm simply removing the meat and replacing that with lentils, but the really smart bit is, I'm using butternut squash for my bechamel sauce. And this is what I'm gonna need. Butternut squash, cashew nuts, some olive oil, I've got onion, garlic, carrots, celery, and some rosemary, a vegetable stock, chopped tomatoes and tomato puree, then some lentils and some lasagna sheets to lay it all up. I'm also using the same machine as Jamie, but with a food processor and a blender. For me, the start of this lasagna is the best meal sauce. Now, obviously we can't use butter and milk. What we're using is cashew nuts and butternut squash. It has butter in the title, but there's no butter in it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cashew nuts in a bowl and soak them in water overnight. Or you could speed it along and use boiling water, but keep it just to an hour. Next up, your beautiful butternut squash. Now, the worst thing about these is peeling them. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna chop it straight in half, scoop out the seeds, season it with olive oil, salt and pepper, bung it in the oven for an hour at 200 degrees. The perfect tomato sauce, it needs a strong base with lots of layers, which is why I'm using some celery, carrots, onions, and some garlic. I'm gonna peel those, stick those in my food processor and use a coarse grating disc. This will get in nice and small so we can fry it off in olive oil.
Right, let's crack on with our bechamel. You want to swap out the food processor for a blender and then pour in your cashews with its water and then scoop out the flesh of your butternut squash and add that to the blender as well. Season it with salt and pepper and give it a blitz with a tablespoon of olive oil so it all comes together. With the base veg now softened, it's time to add the rest of the stuff. We've got some water, two tins of tomatoes, stock cube, tomato puree, and of course your lentils. Now that might look like a lot of liquid in there, but all that flavour can get absorbed into the lentils. You want to bring this to a simmer and cook for about 45 minutes. You might add a little bit of water to stop it catching at the bottom. Now it's just time to layer this up. We're going for lentils at the bottom, then some lasagna sheets. These are eggless, as are most lasagna sheets, but check before you buy them. Then your butternut squash bechamel, and then same again, same again. It's a lasagna. That then goes into the oven at 180 for 30 minutes. That, come on. Well, it smells oh. better than it looks. <laughs> Cheers. But this is the ultimate lasagna, no questions asked. I'm calling this the all day lasagna because it's an effort, a real effort, but it is worth it. I'm going to use beef short rib, going to make an amazing sauce and ragu around it with loads of root vegetables, carrot, celery, garlic, onion, and rosemary. Add tomatoes, tomato puree, stock and white wine to make an incredible sauce that cooks down. I'm also making my own pasta with semolina, flour and water, and an incredible bechamel. Butter, flour, milk, flavored with two cheeses, Parmesan and Taleggio. Gorgeous beef short rib. I'm gonna sear it off in a really hot pan and a little bit of oil to get a bit of color on it whilst we start the base to the sauce. The base to my sauce you've seen before, exactly the same as Barry's, onion, carrot, celery, garlic, peeled, added to the food processor with a knife blade and blitzed up to a paste. Also, don't waste all of that beef fat. That goes into a pan with oil and rosemary. Jamie used fresh lasagna sheets. Barry used dried lasagna sheets. We're making our own pasta. So while the veg sweats off, in the bowl with a dough hook, knead together semolina, zero zero flour or double zero flour and water. All the weights and measurements available down below. Don't forget a pinch of salt. To finish the sauce, when all the blitzed up veg have softened for about five minutes or so, glug in the white wine. It's quite a lot. You want that to reduce by half before adding in tomatoes, tomato puree, stock cube, and then put your beef rib pieces back in. As soon as all those tomatoes have come back up to a simmer, lid on and into an oven. 160 degrees Celsius for three hours until you can see the bone, the meat shrunk back and it will pull nicely. After plenty of kneading, the pasta should be really soft. It's no egg pasta, so it is slightly softer than normal, but it should be really, really elasticy. Wrap it in cling film, put it in the fridge to rest. With the pasta rested, we're now gonna roll it out into sheets of lasagna. So whack on the lasagna roller attachment, dust it with flour, and then you wanna roll it out not too thin to about four out of the nine setting. And then we can actually lay it out and dry it out at room temperature for several hours whilst our beef continues to cook. In Jamie's quick version, he skipped the bechamel altogether and blitzed up ricotta. Barry made something that was dairy free for the vegan option. We are going all out. Butter melted into a pan, turned into a roux with flour, and then add in the milk a little bit at a time. It's whole milk, so it's super rich. We're gonna season it with grated nutmeg and bay leaf, salt and pepper, and let it bubble away. And then we're gonna go in with two different cheeses. Taleggio, which is a gorgeous, soft, smelly, sticky Italian cheese, and a big chunk of Parmesan. For speed, we're gonna quickly grate it up using the fine grating disc in the food processor. Half is going into the sauce, half will hold back to sprinkle over the lasagna before it goes in the oven. And then the last thing to do before we layer this lasagna up is to grab those gorgeous short rib and literally remove the bones and it will just slide straight out. Rip up all the rest of the meat into one sauce. You can skim off any fat that might be on the top. 
and then layer it. Meat, pasta, sauce, and keep repeating all the way up into your dish, finishing with that final bit of Parmesan. And that is an all day, all out lasagna. All it needs is half an hour in a hot oven so the Parmesan goes lovely and golden, the pasta layers cook through. You can do that straight away or you can put it in the fridge and cook it the next day so the flavors get even better. Up to you, half an hour, chop that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I don't dusty. think we need to taste these two now because my mind is purely focused cool. on that one. No, it's all in the tasting and fennel <laughs> sausage could be the way forward. Cheers. Cheers. Well, fennel and sausage is always a good combination. A little kick of chilli is quite nice. It's delicate, delicately balanced. It's not overwhelming either. Now, in no way would I claim this is traditional. I think that's probably for the best. Yeah. But is it delicious? Yes, it is. And is it quick? 20, yes, 30 minutes, is. job done. <laughs> and that herby ricotta thing is absolutely delicious. You know what? I don't miss the bechamel sauce either, which I never thought I'd say. No? Kind of lucky, because you've not gone in there either. Right, let's dig into this one. And should we just say, this is vegan. I'm about to put it on a plate that isn't, but hey, we're not. Cheers. 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 What you get is the tang from quite an intense tomato-y rounded, mm. stewy, ragu-y kind of thing, yeah. but also a sweetness from that kind of squash and cashew nut. And for a, a bechamel sauce with no dairy, how creamy is that, that sauce? It has all the texture of lasagna, and I mean mm. the different textures that you get from the pasta, from a traditional ragu or meat sauce. And it has that cheesiness to it as well on top. That's astonishing. All right. Yep. We've had the cheese. Yep. We've had the vegan. Can we have the real one? Cheers. 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 I don't think there's many lasagnas you could serve as a canapé. Because honestly, one mouthful is enough to take you to heaven. It's not enough, I want to say but it's enough though. to take you. I knew this one was going to be good before it came to the table because the stuff you had left over has already disappeared. And everybody has said, this is the best lasagna they've ever eaten. It's not just the meatiness of the meat. It's the nutmeg and the bay, it's the telegio, it's the little touches, the, the, the nice cheeses, the, the seasoning with the nutmeg. It's just so good. Barry, what's your favourite lasagna? It is standout, but I would also say the butternut squash and cashew of that is brilliant and I always love fennel and sausage together, so there's... The ball where they place. No, this one. That is my ultimate lasagna. I've never had a vegan lasagna that good before, and I've never made a lasagna that quick before. Tell us what you think. Comment down below which would you most like to taste now, which would you most like to cook. You can get all the recipes down below. I think that final lasagna at least deserves a massive thumbs up. So if you like the look of it, then you should like this video. I would go as far to say possibly the best dish we've made in the entire three recipes competitive. I, I completely agree with that. Just cut yourself a small portion. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you reach out with a comment by commenting down below. We read all of them and we will try and reply to as many as possible. And we will see you every Wednesday, every Sunday at 4 p.m. UK time. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> as we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in a few days. How many lasagnas do you think you've had in your life? 3,412.